freaky friends this is colleen and this is margaret and we're the, the cousins, cousins weird. weird hi this, this muppet over there i yes. turn into a yeah, muppet weird. every time i do it weird <laughs> uh and colleen and i have been down here for an hour just like bitching about everything, everything. <laughs> yeah we had, we had to get our bitch out we before we started a, we had a bitch fest we start. had a bitch fest we got it out of our system we're feeling good now yeah we got it out we're, we're ready we're mellow we were having our drinks because it, you know we, were, we got the bitch out when we started talking about makeup and then we're like we're, okay, we're, okay, okay we're good now we we're can gonna, start we're, we're talking about makeup and happy again yeah, yeah. uh we are drinking our uh, a whiskey sour again that we put a smidge of grenadine in because it matched what we're talking about today and it tastes delicious and it tastes good and we put pine- pineapple seltzer in it i don't know what drink we really invented i think we invented a new drink i think we did too but it was supposed to be a whiskey sour but we just kept adding stuff to it so it's it's our version of a it's a cousin's <laughs> weird sour yeah Woo! it's yum um we're in our pod and uh i feel like margaret looks cute today but i am looking like i just crawled out from under a box on the side of the road i just put makeup on but i'm wearing like cargo pants and a cut-up t-shirt that i had i'm wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt and my hair hasn't been brushed today so who's the cute one today not me (laughs) i was cleaning earlier and i just came over what i had on i was cleaning out my kid's toy box and i felt disgusting and had to take a shower so (laughs) i felt disgusting but i didn't care (laughs) It's like, oh, Margaret won't mind if I smell. And so now we're on the couch together. And she's like, why did I sit so close no, to No, you don't stink. <laughs> You're fine. I live with a friggin' teenage boy. Ugh. He's a pretty... Let me tell you. The 20... Well, actually, now that mine's 20, he smells good. Because he's better at he's really, bathing he regularly. He bathes and he... His goal is... Actually, he's always been that way. Since about 13, he's like... I want to smell good because he's obsessed with like colognes and well, stuff. Well, my kid will spray cologne on himself. <laughs> but he <laughs> maybe not the, clean. You get the like bo cologne. Oh, smell. Mm, that's good. It's a nice. Blend. That's a nice blend. Yeah. Can that up? Yeah. <laughs> it's pleasant. Oh my goodness, it's been a day. Okay, so Margaret, we're going to talk about. Okay, I've had a fascination with this for a while now. Okay, it's the Queen Mary. She's a ship. She's gigantic. She's huge. When I had to go for work we, they sent us to long beach california for a concert the lbc y'all we were there and there parked is the queen mary the ship and i was reading about it before i left like what can we do in long beach you know when we're not out of the conference and one of the things was you could do a ghost tour at the queen mary and i was like sign me up where do i go i want to do this so we were down by the pier and there's some shops and stuff near there and i was like the girls I was with were in the shops, and I'm like, oh, there's the, the Queen Mary's over this way. I'm going to walk over and just look at it and see the sign and stuff. And I start walking out on the pier towards it, and the sheer size of the Queen Mary gave me a panic attack, and I literally ran back towards the land, and I was like, I can't go on her. She's too big. <laughs> I have a... And that's when I first discovered my big fear of large things, the ocean, whales. If you're... If it's a building, don't bother me. Anything in the water that's big gives me... Any mass, like, the universe, like, makes me want to vomit. And the Queen Mary made me realize that big things messed me up. And I couldn't go on her. And I regret it to this day that I didn't do it because she's amazing. So I knew I had to do one of our episodes on her. And because she's, like, like just amazing. I'm going to tell you about her history because you need to know her history to know Megalo- Why do they do ghost stories? Megalophobia. That's it. Is a type of anxiety disorder in which a person experiences intense fear of large objects. That's me. A person with megalophobia experiences intense fear and anxiety when they think of or are around large objects, just as large buildings, statues, animals, and vehicles. Yes. Which would be a ship. So it's megalophobia. Megalophobia. My husband says that, why? How can I be near him then? <laughs> Aww. Such a pervert. Such a pervert is what he's trying to be, Margaret. Oh, I thought because he's a big guy. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. no he's he wasn't being talking about totally himself. a man yes. about it. Okay. He's being a perv. So. Anyway, the Queen Mary. So let's get into her history because we need to know her history to know why there's ghost tours. Why does she have ghost tours? Why does this big giant ship have ghost tours? And I'll tell you why. Okay. So she was um, created and built in Britain in England. Um, the Cunard Line is still today the Cunard 
What's other called? Maybe it's Cunard. Maybe it's Cunard. I don't know. I'm sorry. My mind is in the gutter. <laughs> Cunard line. Anyway, they, they still have cruise ships to this day. They still run cruise. And they actually made a Queen Mary 2 that's out cruising now. Mm. You can go on her. So um, they, you know, were a big company in the making of ocean liners and cruise like going off the transatlantic thing that was a big deal back in the late 20s 30s that's how you traveled right so they um germany and france had just built these massive modern ocean liners they were bigger than any ship that that the british line had and they were like, we need to compete with them. We need to keep up with this. We have to have the best. So they decided they were going to build a fast 75,000 ton ship. Wow. Um, they began building in 1930 in Clyde, Scotland. Um, but then the Great Depression happened. And no one's building anything then. So they had to cease building. And it didn't get to, from 1931 to 1934, there was no building happening. Um so the owners of the Cunard Line, I can't say it without laughing, the <laughs> Cunard Line, um, oh. they go to the king and plead for support from the government because they need money to be able to do this. And they want to keep going. And they, you know, it's good for the, like, to, so British has the biggest liner. Like, oh, it's like a steam thing, right? So it's good for the economy. It's good for the economy. It's good for the country. So they agree, yes, we will give you $9.5 million, or million pounds, sorry, to finish and build Queen Mary, but also build another ship and name it Queen Elizabeth. So basically, they, you do it, we'll name it after who we want, and yeah, you can do that. So um, Queen Mary was named after the Queen of England of the, at the time, um, and she cost about three, I think it was 3.5 or 35 million pounds, and I can't remember which, and I'm thinking it's 3.5 million yeah. total because they had to give them some money towards that plus another ship and it was only nine million so it had to have been 3.5 million um she was uh seventy four thousand four hundred tons she was a hundred i have to call her she she's a girl she's her beautiful. name is mary yeah. so yeah she's a thousand and nineteen point four feet long she has 12 decks held 2,139 passengers and 1,101 crew. Now, let's put this in, like, perspective. The Titanic that we all know was only 883 feet long and only had 46,000 tons. So this is almost twice as heavy as the Titanic. And it goes 3.5 times faster than the Titanic did. Um, So you don't want to be hitting anything with it. So this is like 20 years after the Titanic. Hopefully they learned their lesson. Yeah. So the <laughs> rudder alone was 150 tons. Oh it was the God. largest ever built. It had five dining areas, three class accommodations, three nurseries, two pools, a beauty salon, a grand ballroom. Do they mean nursery like uh, for plants or nursery for babies? I think it was for babies. Okay. Um, entertainment salons, two bars, and an onboard hospital. And it was decked out in the Art Deco style, which was very classy at the time. Engine room was uh, 50 feet below water level. That makes me want to die. It had a shockproof compass, which was the world's largest medic compass at the time. And the first class dining room could hold 800 passengers at one time. Oh, my God. Can you imagine how big (laughs) that is? It's like a a floating city. Basically. Basically, it's a floating city. It's a cruise ship. They really spared no expense doing this. They wanted it to be the -the state-of-the-art best thing on the water. So they hired, um, um, like, the most famous artists of the time to do murals, do sculptures, etch glass in that Art Deco style so that it was hot. Like, Mary's hot, okay? Um... So, uh, I totally want to go on this ship and see it. Especially I know. If it still looks like this. Um, I have no fear of large. Objects, I, I'm so. going to need you to, Mr. T, me, you know, like drug me up. <laughs> like they did Mr. T and the A team to get him on a plane. They used to drug him up and then they get him on the plane and he'd wake up. He's already there. Like, drug me up, wheel me on to the queen, 
and then I'll wake up on there, and then I'll be you'll okay. you'll be on there. You won't even realize that you're on a boat. I mean, I'll know I'm there, but I won't see the outside. So that's what the problem is. So you got a Mr. Teeny in there. Make it drink a bunch of shots of whiskey. Yeah, just get me there. drunk just or something. Stumble along around and then fall over the edge. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how that happens. That can, that does happen actually. Actually, that will happen. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, we're, Margaret. We're getting to that point, Margaret. Getting so there was some tragedy while it was being built. Um, there was a crew when during the the Great Depression when it stopped. Um, when they came back to work after they got the money from the government, they came back to work. They found two dead men in the in the engine room laying near each other now the family of these men that's creepy and that so this has been three years these guys have not have been in there laying dead because it was been three years since they worked on it so the family just thought (laughs) sounds awful the family thought oh they must have just killed themselves because they lost their job during the depression so no one went looking for them like well people were killing themselves then because it was yeah it was a horrible time but so they found them, and they they're thinking that there must have been some kind of noxious gas or something that killed them both at the time. Like they didn't kill themselves. There was no sign of that. They just they must have breathed in something at the time and this died there. And when everyone left, no one knew they were there. And they found them when they came back three years later. So there were there were two, those two guys, and then there was a welder. This is terrible. Why am I laughing? This is awful. There was a welder working between the double hull, and he inadvertently sealed himself inside. Oh God! Inside. And. They, How could he not just unweld himself? I don't know what happened, but he got stuck in there. He's stuck in there, and then... So his little skeleton <laughs> is still in there? So he sealed himself inside, and then the family agreed to they, they leave him there, and they had the funeral right on the ship. So he's still he there? The skeleton's just inside the hall of the ship. Oh, my God. That's and terrible. I, I don't have his name, and I don't know if it's because I couldn't find it. I can't remember. So he's just there. And they say that you can hear tapping. <gasps> That's horrible. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, she took her um, maiden voyage. But honestly, the guy was not too bright. If he seals himself no. inside a hall no. that he was working on, unless it was somebody else sealed him in there on accident, or maybe on purpose. I don't maybe. know. I mean, I don't. I never heard, and I don't have any more information on that. But who knows, right? <sighs> So when she took her maiden to- voyage on May fourteenth, nineteen thirty-six. So here's one thing I have to tell you. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, so she left South, Southampton, which is a port in Southeast England, to New York City. That was the transatlantic trip that, that she would do. Um, on her first voyage, there was a storm. One of her first voyages, there was a storm. Now, when they were building the Queen Mary, they thought handrails were going to take away from the class and style. Why would we want handrails? That's silly. It doesn't look pretty. So oh. they didn't put them on. So during the storm, people were just flung about the ship like rag dolls everywhere. And some poor little girl, when they hit the big <gasps> wave, fell off the stairwell. And she didn't fall off the boat. She fell off the stairwell and broke her neck and died. Oh, just my God. Girl. So when she got came back from that trip, they dry docked her. They put handrails in. Well, that's smart. Yeah, because what were you thinking? I know pretty. I like pretty, too, but... Come on, you safety. Just put people. pretty handrails in. I know. You could make them pretty. Very easily. Um, so for f- three years, she made transatlantic um, journey. Um, she had luxury accommodations, and it attracted the rich and famous. Of course it did. Of course. It was the only civilized ways to travel. She got you there faster and most comfortable you ever will travel in your life. Clark Gable, Bob Hope, Laurel and Hardy, Desi Arnaz, and the royalty sailed the Queen Mary. Um, like I said, it was the most quickest and comfortable way to get there. And um, on her first journey alone, she her speed won the Blue Riband. It's R-I-B-A-N-D. I'm not saying ribbon wrong. It's just Blue riband. 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 Oh. Um, it's basically um, breaking the speed record for crossing the Atlantic. She was the fastest. Now, there was a ship called the Normandy that was in France that would try win it back, and then she would win it back, and they go they kind of... They were basically the same ship. They're they they power wise they were the same speed, right? And that's why like, well, ooh, we made it quicker this time. Yeah, well, but then we did. And then I think it, she held that record until 1938 when a U.S. ship actually ended up beating her. That was the last time she won the record. But anyway, so.